good morning dear students uh, welcome back to this session so in this session we will uh, take a module 4 we will start the module 4 so the worm gear clutches and brakes design of clutches and brakes this is the first part that i want to take in today's session uh, in today's session we will discuss about clutches in that uh, single plate clutch and uh, derivation and problems so let us begin with the clutch definition clutch is defined as a mechanical device used for the engaging engaging and the disengaging of the driven shaft with the driving shaft without stopping the driving or without altering the driving speed or driving shaft speed so here the definition which is given mechanical the clutch is a mechanical device used to connect the or disconnect the source of power so that uh, the from the remaining parts so the power transmission system at the will of the operator the friction clutches or say the clutches mechanical clutches they may be classified into two main categories first so one is positive clutch and another one is called as friction clutch so positive clutch is one uh, in which the jaws are provided on the front face of the flange so are the flanges which are mounted on the driving and driven shafts so whenever these two are brought in contact what happens the interlocking of the jaws that takes place so that there is a rigid connection or the rigid joint that takes place so this may be uh, useful in some of the situations where the lower speed shafts they are used and uh, whenever there is a disengagement that is to be taken place so rapid disconnection that can be possible here so because of the jaws which are present over the surface here the jaws may be of square type or these may be spiral type so because of uh, the presence of these jaws so the merits of uh, positive clutches they are simple in construction no slip takes place that's why the name given here as positive clutch and uh, no heat generated because uh, as this is these are the compact and low cost elements so these things they are having demerits as in case of high speed applications these cannot be preferred because of the jaws so the breaking of the teeth or the jaws that may be possible whenever the high speed shafts they are uh, uh, to be uh, used with this application so that's why the next category that can be implemented here that is friction clutch friction clutches these works on the concept of friction so frictional forces that are developed between the two or more surfaces which are in contact so here uh, the jaws are uh, not there so that the smooth surface that is brought in contact so that there is a slip that is resulted in the friction clutch so because of this slip what happens the engagement and uh, disengagement or uh, which enables the driver during the engagement and disengagement the easy pickup and accelerate to uh, with respect to the given load with the minimum shock is possible and uh, they can be used these friction clutches can be used uh, in case of high speed machines also as there is no uh, presence of teeth or jaws on the front face smooth engagement due to the gradual increase in the normal force that is possible so that's why the most often used clutches are the friction clutches so this is what the second category so further the friction clutches they are classified as a plate clutch or disc clutch so the plate clutch or disc clutch that may be again subdivided into single plate or single disc clutch and a multi plate or multi disc clutch so these are the two sub classifications or sub two sub categories of the plate clutch so that's what we have to discuss in this uh, chapter further the rest of the classification that includes cone clutch centrifugal clutch dry clutch magnetic clutch and eddy current clutch so these are the different subcategories related to the friction clutches so they are also having their own applications so here as per the plate clutch so during the meshing what happens the torque is transmitted here because of the frictional force that is developed so before that how that particular friction single plate clutch is that is working that we have to see here consider uh, the single plate clutch which is shown in the figure here 
it has two flanges one flange is mounted on the driving shaft another flange is mounted on the driven shaft which is mounted on the slice splined uh, uh, shaft uh, where this particular flange is free to move to and fro here and to avoid the uh, flexibility or the free movement there are springs which are provided just uh, on the shaft here so this provides the actuating force or the force exerted on the uh, uh, this particular driven flange uh, so that that acts as an actuating force here to engage and disengage right and uh, with respect to the particular surface which is darkened here only this portion so this is what called as friction material which are lined on the surface of the flanges so usually the material used for the as a friction material is cork or leather or ferrado so this is related to the single plate clutch now as there is a frictional force which is developed because of the contact between the two surfaces so therefore the torque is transmitted here or the torque required to overcome that friction so torque transmitted by a single plate or disc clutch so consider the single plate clutch which is shown here so which is having the outer diameter of d naught and inner diameter of di and the force of friction that is induces the pressure on the friction lining or the friction material so which is normal pressure so that is denoted by means of a notation small p and uh, in terms of radiates radii d naught is to ro di is to ri P is the pressure intensity and uh, force F that is acting that is called as actual actuating force or axial force exerted on the clutch is uh, represented here as F that is in Newton torque transmitted by the friction that is Newton per m, Newton mm and uh, to derive the expression it is not possible to consider the entire plate first so consider a small elemental ring uh, with the thickness dr at radius r. So the elemental area, area of this elemental ring is given by 2 pi r multiplied by dr. So the axial force exerted on this elemental ring is given by the from the fundamental expression pressure equal to force per unit area based upon that itself. So area is 2 pi r into dr is already written here for that elemental ring. Multiply this one with the normal pressure exerted. So that gives us the product of area and the pressure that is nothing but force axial force so this axial force further uh, if it is multiplied with the because it is a normal force if it is multiplied with the frictional friction coefficient that is mu coefficient of friction then the resulting force is termed as frictional force frictional force frictional force is the product of normal force and uh, coefficient of friction so further the frictional torque frictional torque is given by the product of frictional force and radius so that the frictional torque exerted or transmitted due through that uh, small elemental portion of the ring is 2 pi r dr into p into mu that is frictional force multiplied by radius so that is what the frictional torque so these are the elements of the forces which are written here related to that a small portion of thickness dr but uh, actually the thickness of uh, this particular plate is from this point to this point so that is what the distance between d naught from this point to this point it is so this gap this gap or this particular surface over which the frictional force is exerted as well as the torque transmitted because of the friction that is d naught minus di divided by 2 or r naught minus ri so for that to get the overall torque transmitted and overall axial force equations we have to integrate these two equations that is axial force equation 2 pi r dr into p within the limits di by 2 and d naught by 2 so this is the equation of axial force integration of 2 pi r dr into p within the limits di by 2 and d naught by 2 these are the limiting values say this as equation number one and a torque equation say frictional torque equation that is also used with the integration symbol 2 pi r into r there are two r's here 2 pi r into this r so r square it is 2 pi r square multiplied by dr into mu into p so this is also integrated within the limits di by 2 and d naught by 2 
so this is what the overall excel force and the overall torque transmitted uh, i'd say this as equation one and this as equation number two so these two equations are to be solved for there by considering the criterias say two criterias they are to be considered here uh, to obtain the equation of torque so uniform pressure criteria or uniform pressure theory and another one is uniform wear theory so by considering uh, these uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory the first thing that we have to consider here is uniform pressure theory so for new clutches uh, usually the theory is to be considered is uniform pressure theory for worn out or we worked out clutches uniform wear theory is to be assumed now we have to derive the equation for the torque and axial force by using both the theories suppose if i can if i consider the first theory that is uniform pressure theory so related to this theory so here the pressure distribution or throughout the area surface area or the contact area is to be treated as constant hence equation 1 what we have written here so here the value of p is to be regarded as the constant term so therefore in uh, in addition to 2 pi this p is also to be considered as constant and it is taken outside the integration symbol so the terms remaining within the integration symbol are r into dr so if i integrate this r with respect to r so that the equation that is resulted here is uh, r square divided by 2 so what is that this is to be written with the equal symbol here so here also i have to write the equal to equal to 2 pi into p integration of this particular value is r square by 2 within the limits d i and d naught by 2 and d i by 2 so once uh, i substitute the upper limit and lower limit so that if i substitute r as d naught by 2 then the value is d naught square divided by 4 minus d naught d i square divided by 4 and this 2 is taken outside so this is written here 2 pi divided by 2 so that uh, this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled so 1 by 4 this 4 is taken here 1 by 4 into pi into p into bracket d naught square minus d i square so this is what the one of the equation which is called as axial force equation say so this equation is available in the data handbook page number 258 equation number 13.9 a c so this is what the equation of axial force next next comes the equation of torque that we have to reduce here so with the help of uh, this equation itself we can uh, rearrange the terms to get the equation of pressure so p is kept in the on, on one side and remaining terms they are taken to the other side so that the equation is 4 fa divided by pi into d naught square minus di square say this is equation number three so now you consider equation number two so equation number two is equation of torque t is equal to integration of 2 pi mu into pr square into dr within the limits di by 2 and d naught by 2. so here if i take this uh, 2 pi mu are the constants along with that p is also treated as constant term here so if i take these terms outside the integration symbol the things which are retained remained in the uh, integration symbol they are r square into dr so if i integrate this r square with respect to r the equation is r cube into r cube divided by 3 so now i have to substitute the upper limit r uh, uh, sorry d naught by 2 in place of r here so d naught by 2 raised to 3 is nothing but d naught cube divided by 8 minus di cube divided by 8 so that uh, this 3 is taken outside here so this equation is 2 by 3 into pi into mu into p so after simplification after simplification what i get t is equals to 1 by 3 into bracket pi into mu into p this 2 divided by 8 that is 4 here d naught cube minus di cube divided by 4 so from 3 equation 3 I have got uh, something here the equation of pressure p is equal to 4 fa divided by pi into d naught square minus di square so this equation is written here 
that is from equation number three that uh, expansion of uh, p is to be written here so after simplification i will be getting the equation of t as mu fa into dm divided by 2 what is dm dm is the mean diameter so which is given by this expression if i substitute here so the resulting equation is as good as this equation so the next step is to simplify the things say here if it is related to only one side of the only one active surface suppose there are uh, n dash friction surfaces in that case n dash is to be used so usually with respect to single plate clutch either only one active surface only one active friction surface or at the most two active friction surfaces they are present so therefore n dash that indicates number of active friction surfaces so this is available in equation 13.9 c page number 258 of the data handbook so similarly we will be having the axial force expression next comes the uniform wear theory <coughs> according to this uniform wear theory what is assumed here see a worn out uh, clutch already used clutch uh, the particular on the surface the rate of wear the rate of wear is to be assumed as constant here so the rate of wear is uh, usually given by product of uh, pressure into radius and uh, constant term is replaced here that is with respect to proportionality constant so PR is to be treated as constant here. So with respect to this particular case, say equation number one and equation number two, they are to be considered again. Say equation one that is axial force expression. So here two pi integration of PR dr within the limits di by two and d naught by two. So PR is to be treated as constant term here. So that is C that is taken outside. So that the integration of uh, constant with respect to R is R. So here again, I have to substitute the limits d naught by two and di by two, so that the expression for uh, FA is obtained here as two pi c into d naught by two minus di by two. So you have to rearrange the equation again. C equal to say c equal to by taking this c on one side and uh, send other terms to the other side, so that FA divided by two pi into d naught minus di divided by say 2 to gets cancelled here fa divided by pi into d naught minus di that you get say this as equation number 7 again consider equation number 2 so if i consider equation 2 uh, say this equation includes 2 pi mu pr square into dr p is small p here pressure itself within the limits di by 2 and d naught by 2 di by 2 is the lower limit and d naught by 2 is the upper limit take all the terms say product of pr is c here and uh, r dr that is the another r term uh, included uh, with respect to this pr square is kept inside the integration symbol so integration of r becomes r square by 2 within the limits d naught by 2 and di by 2 so this equation what you get here after integration 2 pi mu c d naught square divided by 8 minus di square divided by 8 d naught square divided by 8 minus di square divided by 8 so here uh, divided by 8 because already there is a two term that exists here so di square that is d naught square divided by 4 into 2 it is so that you will be getting 8 term here uh, so further simplification what we get uh, pi mu c divided by 4 it is this term is 4 this term is 4 here so this term is here uh, it is to be written as 2 into 4 2 into 4 and here also the same thing 2 into 4 2 into 4 d naught square divided by 2 into 4 d naught square by di square by 2 into 4 so this is what the expression so once uh, the equation c from uh, equation number 7 is to be substituted here so that the equation what you get is t equal to mu into f a into dm divided by 2 so here d naught square minus di square uh, divided by divided by d naught minus di 
So d naught square minus d i square is a square minus b square form. So a plus b a minus b. So that d naught plus d i that remains here. So here d m is uh, d m equal to d naught minus d i divided by two. Say this as equation number nine. So this is what the equation of mean diameter as applied to uniform wear theory. So these are the two conditions. So unless and until it is specified, you have to assume uniform wear theory itself. So the torque transmitted with respect to n dash number of similar to that previous case, if there are n number of n dash number of active friction surfaces, then the equation is to be used like this. Available in Tata and Book, page number two fifty nine, equation number thirteen point nine. Next, uh, we have to use the axial force expression. Here, there are two kinds of pressures that we get here: average pressure and maximum pressure. Maximum pressure occurs at inner radius, so the equation is available in the data handbook as F is equal to pi P into D I divided by two, into bracket D naught minus D I. Say equation number thirteen point ninety, page number two fifty eight. Suppose if uh, the mean average pressure is given, which occurs at the mean radius, so that the D I term is to be replaced with the D M. D I term is only is to be replaced by D M, and the pressure. Pressure is to be. This is the expression for pressure. So the notation for the pressure it is. So pressure uh, is average pressure. This pressure is average pressure, and this pressure is maximum pressure. So you have to remember that, and uh, the same equation is to be manipulated and used here whenever there are two conditions are given. So here, with respect to that. it is a note which is given here the major portion of the life of friction lining comes under the uniform wear friction lining comes under uniform wear criterion in the design of clutches uniform wear theory is justified so unless and until it is specified you have to use uniform wear theory itself for the design of clutches now take the some examples or the problems a single plate clutch with the, of both sides effective both sides effective means n dash is equal to to number of active friction surfaces number of active friction surfaces n dash that is equal to 2 and uh, both sides are given and has effective diameter 300 mm as the outer diameter and 160 mm as the inner diameter so d not is 300 mm and di is uh, 160 mm and also the coefficient of friction is given here as 0.2 mu is equal to 0.2 and runs at 1000 rpm that is n rpm and the power find the power transmitted by using uniform wear and pressure distribution cases allowable maximum pressure is 0.08 mpa maximum pressure is given here now consider the first as uniform wear theory according to uniform wear theory the mean diameter is given by d not minus di divided by 2 so this value is 230 mm so 300 minus 160 sorry 300 plus it is so this is plus where it is So plus one sixty divided by two, that value is two thirty mm. So this equation is available in page number two fifty nine, just below the equation thirteen point nine f. Now axial force, axial force that we have to calculate. So the pressure which is given here is maximum pressure. So according to this maximum pressure condition, we have to make use of equation number thirteen point ninety, page number two fifty eight, where F A is equal to one by two into pi into P is maximum pressure. P is Maximum pressure d i into bracket d naught minus d i. So all these values are given. Substitute and get the value of F A, which is two eight one four point eight seven newtons. Next, a torque transmitted. So equation thirteen point nine F, page number two fifty eight, is to be used. So by using this equation, say t is equal to one by two mu into n dash into F A into d m. So with the help of this equation. Uh, you will be getting the value of torque in newton mm directly dm is in mm itself so power equation power equation that we know that is p equal to 2 pi nt divided by 16 into uh, 10 raised to 6 that is to get the value of p in kilowatts directly so n is given here as 1000 rpm so substitute all the values and get the value of power p as 13.56 kilowatts next comes uniform pressure theory so according to this pressure Uniform pressure theory. It mean diameter is given by uh, page number two fifty eight of data handbook, just below the equation thirteen point nine c. T m is equal to two by three into this one is the term into here. This 
into d naught q minus d i q divided by d naught square minus d i. And again, this is also the same thing. into this one so dm is mean diameter value is 237.1 mm and axial force fa is given by equation number 13.9 a page number 258 f1 by 4 into pi into p into d0 square minus di square so by using this equation you will be getting the axial force substitute this axial force equation in torque equation available in page number 258 equation number 13.9 c t equal to n dash into 1 by 2 into mu into fa into dm dm is 237 fa is 4046 mu is constant given n dash is 2 so once you substitute all these values you will be getting torque value and then use power transmitted equation and uh, p equal to 20.1 kilowatt that is the answer so in the next case the next problem a car engine develops a maximum power of 15 kilowatt at 1000 rpm the clutch used uh, is a single plate clutch having both sides effective so n is n dash is equal to 2 again n dash is equal to 2 again uh, 15 kilowatt power is given 1000 rpm is given and uh, here the external diameter d naught is 1.5 times the internal diameter so d naught is 1.5 times di mu is equal to 0.3 so mean exer mean axial pressure this given here as uh, 0 0.085 Newton per mm square. So determine the dimensions d naught and di uh, of the friction surface and the force necessary to engage the plates. Assume inform pressure condition. So by using that uh, inform pressure condition itself uh, with the given power, get the torque value. And uh, after that, uh, uh, dm value that you have to get. Since di is given in terms of d not di, d naught is given in terms of di. So 1.25 times di and uh, di di term that you get. So dm that is obtained in terms of dm itself. And axial force equation by using equation number 13.9a. Substitute d naught as in terms of di itself. So that this equation is also in terms of di only. Torque value that you know which is calculated by using power equation 2 pi and t divided by 60 into 10 raised to 6. By using that relation itself, torque value is obtained in Newton mm and uh, I is 2 that is n dash 1 by 2 multiplied by 0.3 that is mu and Fa is in terms of di and as well as dm is also in terms of di. dm is also di. So if you solve this equation, you will be getting di, d naught, dm and Fa. So this is what the related things related to the single plate clutch. So in the next session uh, tomorrow, uh, the next session I will take the third problem on single plate clutch and then multiplate clutch and then problems on multiplate clutch. So I hope you have followed the session. Thank you.